Welcome back, and if this is your first time watching, my name is Brandon, and I sell men's clothing on eBay. This is day 70 of the What Sold series, where I show you my daily eBay sales. And at the end of the video, I'll go over my net profit for the day. Let's not waste any time, let's jump right into the sales. The first sale of the day are these Juice World The Wrapper sweatpants in a men's small. They took 45 days to sell, and they sold for a best offer of $40 plus shipping, and that was with some flaws on them. So number two was this Nike running sweatshirt in a men's medium. It was kind of like a waffly knit and it sold in 62 days for a best offer of $17 plus shipping. So number three was this Roper Rodeo blue western shirt in a men's medium. This came from the buyout where I bought uh, like 30 or 40 western shirts. I paid about $8.50 each. This one sold in two days for a best offer of $20 plus shipping and that was with a couple little flaws. Sale number four, this is a brand that I don't normally pick up, Falconable. This sold in one day for a best offer of $31 plus shipping. It was a button up shirt and like I said, I don't normally pick these up, but this one was linen and that helped it make it sell really quickly. Sale number five was a pair of Joe's jeans in a, they were a women's pair, 32 by 27. They took about a year and a half to sell and they sold for a best offer of $16 plus shipping. So number six was this James Per Se puffer jacket. It was goose down filled and it wasn't a women's size one. It took 49 days to sell and it sold for a best offer of $42 plus shipping. It was unworn, but it did have a little uh, tear underneath the flap. You couldn't see it when you were wearing it, but it was there. So if not, I think it could have probably sold for 10 or 20 bucks, 10 or 20 bucks more. So number seven, was a Tommy Bahama shirt. This one's a corduroy shirt. I think it's the first time I found a Tommy Bahama corduroy shirt and it was called the Dell Coast. And it sold in 19 days for a best offer of $25 plus shipping. Sale number eight was a Faraday shirt. This one was a reversible one and it was super soft. It sold in six days for a best offer of $25 plus shipping. Sale number nine was a pair of Stussy jeans. They were new with tags and in size men's 32 by 32. They took about six months to sell and they sold for a best offer of $50 plus shipping. Sale number 10 was a Tommy Bahama silk button up shirt. This one took 20 days to sell and it sold for full price $18 plus shipping. Sale number 11 was a Carhartt jacket in a men's large. This one was called the Shoreline, and it was one of the Storm Defender jackets. Those are some of the best ones. They always sell super quickly and for a good amount. This one sold in six days for full price, $50 plus shipping, and that was with a company embroidery on it. Sale number 12 was a Johari West Hawaiian shirt. This one took over a year to sell and it sold for a best offer of $10 plus shipping. These usually sell for around 20 bucks. This one just kind of fell through the cracks, then it got on sale, so it only sold for 10 bucks. Sale so number 13, this is a Rain Spooner Melly Kaliki Maka shirt, so one of the Christmas ones. This one was from 1998, and it took six months to sell and it sold for a best offer of $24 plus shipping. Um, this time of year, these are selling for 40 to 50 bucks. This is another item that happened to just not sale, then got on my sale, and uh, yeah, only sold for 24. But uh, if I would have normally sold this for like 40 to 50 bucks, so I do want to go back and relist all my Rain Spooner Melly Kaliki Makas. That way, they're not on the sale because they will still easily sell for 40 bucks. Sale number 14 was this vintage LL Bean sweater in a women's large. This took nine months to sell and it sold for a best offer of $13 plus shipping. I'm kind of surprised it didn't sell for more just because of the great print on it, but it didn't have the label on the front of it, like the name tag, where some of them have the little the one that looks like a Patagonia, but it says L.L. Bean. So that probably hurt the value a little bit. So number 15 was this vintage Eddie Bauer puffer jacket in a women's medium. This was a goose down jacket. It took 55 days to sell and it sold for a best offer of $41 plus shipping and that was with some flaws on it. Um, most goose down jackets do at least decently. This is a good example of that. This is an older one. It was a little beat up and it still sold for $21 in less than two months. 
So number 16 was a Disneyland Spirit jersey. This one was for the uh, Small World, and it sold in nine months for a best offer of $55 plus shipping. I think originally I just had this price way too high. Um, it seemed really rare. I couldn't find too many other ones, so that's why I priced it up so high, but I'm still really happy with the $55 sale. The next three items all went to the same buyer. They're Brooks and Dunn Western shirts. This one sold in two days for full price, $35 plus shipping, and that was with a few flaws on it. This next Brooks and Dunn Western shirt, like I said, went to the same buyer. It also sold in two days for full price, $30 plus shipping. And this is the third one that went to that buyer. This one they did uh, send an offer, so this one sold for $25, and it took 11 days to sell. And this also had a few flaws on it as well. So number 20 was this Pendleton flannel shirt, and this one was one of the ones that had the pearl snaps in a great size of men's XL tall. This sold in two days for a best offer of $67 plus shipping. These Pendleton flannels that have the snap buttons always sell extremely well, and this one was no different. So number 21 was this Rain Spooner Hawaiian shirt in a men's XL. This one took 25 days to sell, and it sold for a best offer of $25 plus shipping. So number 22 was this vintage Native American shirt in a men's 2XL. This sold, it took almost two years to sell and it sold for a best offer of $10 plus shipping. There was one more sale but there was an issue with pulling it up. It was a Lauren Ralph Lauren uh, snap button shirt and it had multiple pockets on it. It was kind of like a fishing shirt and that one sold in 10 days for full price $30 plus shipping. But that's it for the sales, let's jump into the numbers. On November 9th, we sold 23 items for a total gross sales of $861.38, giving us an average sale price of $37.43. This is an amazing day, um, even above what I'm asking for. I sold more items than I list, so I sold 23 items, I'm only listing 20. A great average sale price. Like I said, overall just a great day, gonna be a great profit. As you guys know, the selling costs and the net sales are always inaccurate. Let me show you guys what they really are. Oops, that's not it. There we go. The selling costs were $265.53. The breakdown for that is $102.62 in eBay final value fees, $129.79 in shipping labels, $33.12 in promoted listings. 17 of the 23 sales did come via promoted listings. I promote all my items at 5% and I'm happy to pay those extra fees to get those extra sales. If we take away the selling costs and the tax and fees collected by eBay, away from the gross sales amount, that gives our net sales of $547.23. We still need to take away our cost of goods for the day. We're currently using an average cost of goods of $11.73. So for 23 items, the total cost of goods is $269.79. If we take that away from our net sales, that gives our net profit for the day of $277.44. We also have some excess because we sold three uh, more items than I listed. So the cost of goods will have some extra money that we can either reinvest or take out as profit. Um, it'll also help to cover some of those days that we didn't sell 20 items that we need to reinvest some of the extra profit. So that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow for day 71 of the What Sold series. Peace.